Thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Dorka Valokova, uh, and I am a community architect in the Open Source Program Office at Red Hat. And I'm going to talk about six tips I've learned from working with the team of volunteers at uh, DEF CONF CZ. Um, so my goal today is to share a bit about my work and the best practices I've learned first as a volunteer at DEFCONF and then second as a leader of the group of volunteers at DEFCONF. So DEFCONF CZ is a community uh, conference uh, usually held in Brno, Czech Republic, and it actually has a strong Fedora presence. It actually has a track. So I thought I'll ask first, like, is there anyone who ever attended DEFCONF CZ? And if yes, uh, were you an attendee or a speaker or a volunteer? I just want to learn more about, uh, about the audience today. Oh yeah, Langdon, hey. <laughs> I see some familiar names. So it's great to see you and I'll ask you questions to help me drive the conference in the future. So this is awesome. Okay. So before I start with the lessons, let me just click to another slide. If you forgot, this is how it looks like. Um, so before, um, since I am going to talk about the conference, so we are at the conference, I wanted to say a huge thank you to all the organizers and especially to Marie Norden, who is basically driving this event. Um, Marie and I were colleagues, we're both community architects at Red Hat, and um, it might seem that our work is like totally different core, it's very similar. Um, so Marie is involved in a specific project, obviously I'm talking about Fedora, and uh, I am involved in many in a specific location, Brno, Czech Republic. Um, so what I do, um, um, in my community architecture work is that I often um, look for speakers to talk about specific topics. Um, I support local events. Um, I support content creation. And um, I often look for volunteers to various projects and programs. And DEFCOM CZ is by far the biggest project I am responsible for. And um, what I really want to say is that we try to stick to open source principles. And that's why I really hope um, anyone who's interested in volunteer driven projects and anyone who's interested in leading volunteer driven projects is going to talk interesting. Uh, or anyone who's just you know, want to increase um, the, your influence uh, or uh, anyone who's working with people um, as a people manager or a team lead. Um, okay, let's just go to dive into the tips I wanted to share with you. Um, so, tip, promote the perks of volunteering. So obviously when you're looking for um, people to join your project, you should start with what you expect from them. Um, what is the type of work that you need help with? Um, when they should be available, how much time um, they, should, they should invest in it. But equally important to mention what they can gain from participating in your project. Um, so at DEFCON CZ, what I often say um, as to help like motivate people to join the hearing group is that they can learn something new um, they can expand their um, or network, uh, they can get swag, uh, they can use this experience to advance in their career. And many people say that they do it before because they want to give back to community. Um, and for many people, it's a, it's a combination of these things. But um, you should not be surprised to find out that some people do it just for one reason and not for like a deeper sense of belonging. So if someone wants a hoodie or a mug and they get it and they are absolutely okay with it, you should be okay with that too. Um, which brings me to a quick question to the audience, like 
what motivates you to do extra work? Is it what I mentioned? Is it something else? If it's something from what I mentioned, tell me what it is. I'm curious to see whether it's the same or really different for everyone. Let me know in chat. Would really appreciate that. Okay, so once you use or mentioned uh, what people can gain, get them motivated. Oh, the options were um, learn something new, expand the, your network, swag, um, advancement in a career, and give back to community. Sometimes people say they do it for fun. So that's also an option. Yep, totally agree, Justin. Some people do it because they like the feeling of being a part of something bigger. Okay, let's continue with the lessons. We'll have a time to look at your answers. Um, so once you uh, mention this all, uh, it will hopefully uh, help you create a diverse team. <laughs> so, uh, and when I'm talking about diversity, I just don't mean, I don't just mean um, different backgrounds or different knowledge, different level of experience. I like to look at the ratio of new people and returning volunteers. Um, so, and those new people questions can really help you make um, better decisions. Like once you have to explain something to someone who's completely new that really helps you reevaluate whether you're doing the right things. And what I also find useful is that, um, is when you call for volunteers more than once at the beginning during the whole, your whole project, because people who are already participating can be advocates um, and you'll get that new, pers new person perspective even during, um, during the planning. And the third lesson or the third tip I wanted to cover here is leading by example. So leading by example, I have to say, I truly learned what it means when I was a volunteer. So when I saw other leaders and what they do, uh, and I'm trying to just copy that. <laughs> um, so I try to bring positive attitudes to our meetings uh, and to everything that we do. I try to focus on on like what we've already achieved uh, and I don't mind getting my hands uh, dirty. So in other words, no work is beneath me. Uh, and I feel like this is really important because in every project, there is um, a number of tasks that are not so popular. <laughs> they might be boring, they might be repetitive and it's important to find uh, or it's important to distribute this work equally. And let's have a look at what one of the volunteers is saying. And I think the guy is also here. So this is a shout out to you. Uh, so when I asked him about what motivates him to participate in DEFCOM CZ. Uh, so Peppa is Peppa, in other words, Yosef. That's how we change names in Czech language. Um, is um, volunteering, I don't know, for four or five years. He is helping at, ha, us with the website, with the CFP, with schedules, so many things. And very grateful for your uh, appreciated work. And this is a great time for me to look at what you answered to my questions. Hey, everyone. Once again, I see some people joined a bit later. give back to the community. Yeah, that's what I hear a lot, uh, that people do extra work because they wanna give back to the community and learn new things. Then I love it. <laughs> overwhelming, overwhelming feeling of obligation. Ooh, Paul. Sorry, I only got to it now. Thank you, Matt. That's, um, I'm very interested in the results. Okay, let's continue with another set of tips I've learned for working with the team of volunteers at DEFCON CZ. 
Um, so it's crucial that there is someone sort of overlooking, maybe a group of someone's over your project, someone who identifies um, what you want to accomplish and how you want to accomplish it, um, who sets the deadlines, priorities, and uh, defines the structure that volunteers can contribute to. Um, so some pieces of these structures are defined and it cannot be changed and it's important that everyone understands it. So for example, we use, we also used hopping at DEFCONF, see the same as here um, at NEST, and that was one of the defined pieces of structure. So there were people who wanted to help out with the virtual environment and they um, were asked to work with uh, hopping. Um, but everything else should be up in tiers. Uh, so what they want to do, how they want to do it, with whom they want to collaborate. Uh, that's up to them. So as, as soon as you start micromanaging people, they will not enjoy it. It's not volunteering anymore, anymore since this is usually extra work for them. They should enjoy it at some level. Um, and since we still have enough time, I will share uh, what, what I will share like what we actually specifically do um, at DevConf CZ. Um, so we use Trello to track uh, tasks in progress, um, but you can use anything as 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 far as you have things that are to do in progress and who should do them. Um, I usually define that structure by creating working groups that are necessary for the success of the conference, um, such as um, CF uh, call for proposals, schedule, registration, venue or virtual um, environment. And then ask people to choose what they want to do. Uh, what I like to do is also encourage those returning volunteers to step up and take upon more of a leadership role uh, within these uh, working groups. Uh, so it's, it's beneficial mainly for two reasons, uh, because it's kind of more challenging for them. So it's not the same work that they've done um, one year ago, uh, but also it, it um, gives them a bit of influence over what, how the conference is going to look like or how your project is going to look like. And um, yeah, and many people want to do extra things, which is awesome. It, give, it really gives character to your event or your project. Um, but it's important to <laughs> let kind of everyone know that if you want to do something extra, it's up to you to find those people to help you drive it. And it's up to you to promote what you want to do. So this, these are the activities that we've done at DEF Conf, like um, coffee meetup or coffee tasting, um, bike hunting challenges, um, anything music related that Moises does. Um, so, but these really gave the character to the conference. Okay, so once you have the structure, you have the people, you should definitely meet regularly. And this is, I mean, even if you feel like you don't have to, and believe me, that happened a lot during the, during the pandemic. Uh, I was like, oh, I kind of know everything that's happening, but it's important to, to let uh, people feel like they're involved, to give them space to suggest better solutions or new ideas. Um, and many times I almost canceled the meeting. And I was really productive at the end. Um, <clears throat> and um, maybe since I see you're really uh, interactive in chat, I have a question, another one for you. So um, <clears throat> I also feel like it's important to have like equal footing at the meetings. So one, since uh, this is really like local thing, uh, when we were organizing an in-person conference, the planning was meeting uh, in person. When we're organizing a virtual conference, 
the planning team was meeting virtually. Now we're probably going to organize a hybrid event. And I don't feel like uh, some people in the room and some individuals joining virtually is the equal footing. I saw Fedora is doing text meetings um, and I wanted to ask you like, what do you think will work for event organization? Would you, would you prefer a text meeting over seeing people in the room and you joining from your kitchen or your bedroom or your office? Let me know in chat. I'm just curious to see. Um, whether that's something that can work. I feel like we will try it with DEF CON CZ. Okay. Um, thank you, Ben. So you say that uh, video chat where every mode would work best. Text chat is good, but slow. Mm -hmm. Both in person and virtual. Thank you. Okay. If one person is remote, everyone is remote principle. Yeah, we can definitely try that. I think that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. We're um, almost at the end uh, with my tip, and it's all about recognition. Um, so there are many ways to reward and recognize people and everyone's a bit different and enjoys a different way of recognition. Um, so um, at, in Brno at Red Hat, we have many people that do extra work and we have a recognition sort of program or a process where we um, say thank people uh, directly. We reach out to um, their managers or their superiors and let them know that people actually done extra work and how quickly they contributed. Um, when it comes to DEF CONF, we publish a list of volunteers uh, that made a conference happen. And as I said, uh, beginning when you mentioned like what people can gain. This is really crucial. It's important to review what you said at the beginning and make sure that you deliver. So if you say that people can get swag, make sure they can get swag um, and all the other things. Um, and um, the nicest ways or one, ones that I um, really like to see the most is seeing people grow uh, with the conference. So this is uh, about those returning volunteers um, who really now have influence over the conference. Um, okay, so I think that's it for me. However, uh, since we're obviously going to plan another conference, um, I'd like to hear from you, like, did I get did I get it right? Did I get anything? What would you add? And I think you can also share your video and audio if you want to. We can just look at chat. Or if you have any questions, just ask those questions. Ooh, questions in Q&A. Thank you. It's loading. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you the last slide. That one is also important. Another evidence of what we do at DEF CONF. So they say Skatka, she is participating in DEF CONF, like I think for the second year, she's driving social media mainly. And for the fir first year she was, um, sort of a member of the working group and this year in 2021 she was leading the group and also appreciate you. Q&A. Um, so, how do you handle cases where people are really enthusiastic to volunteer but 
take on too much or just don't follow through with their commitment commitments. Yeah, that happens quite often. So when I see someone is I'll do it, I'll do that too, volunteering too much, I'll try to I try to explain them that just like, it's uh, like take one thing that you enjoy most out of these and focus on that. Once it's like going well, you can do something else. But um, people sometimes do not follow through. That's true. Uh, that's why I try to build that structure in a way that everyone has a backup. So um, that's why we work in groups. Uh, and if there is really, really at the end, um, there's no work beneath me, so I'll do it. <laughs> okay, how do you handle cases? No. The second question that I saw before, and I will return to the last one. What is one of the most effective ways you have seen at DEFCON to recognize re reward volunteers? Um, so I think what really works is the recognition, like saying who did what, and then encouraging others to say thank you to all the volunteers. And also people like swag. That's like, that works well everywhere, I feel. Um, how does the structure and priorities of an event change between in-person and virtual? Whew, good question. Mm, so structure is kind of similar. I'd say the structure is kind of similar because for an event you need to like you need to build that schedule. That's a lot of work. Uh, you need to come up with like what are the formats. That's a huge change. Uh, but then it's kind of same. Like pe some people have to look at the submissions, rate them, evaluate. Then we'll build schedule. Then we publish the schedule, open the registration. So that's almost the same, but you need additional time to test everything and to set up everything because it kind of takes a longer time virtually somehow. Um, fewer people can do it. Um, and priorities, I think you have to very much think about the engagement with the audience and that's uh, that's hard, especially now when we're second year pandemic. Okay, what if you run a project but aren't able to meet regularly or can't guarantee you can make it? Um, so this is if you are there or if you were a um, contributor, I'm not entirely sure. So as a leader, um, you know what, it doesn't matter. I'll try to reply to both of these. Uh, so um, you don't really, I mean, if you can't, you don't have to. It's important, it's important to, uh, it's important to like, oh, know what's happening, what everyone's doing, like, think on what's done what needs to be uh, what needs to be done uh, and um, like who will do it by when will you know, people do it who's like responsible for tasks i mean meeting meetings work really well but it can be done in like a written form with reminders and stuff and um, tips on how we can learn skills and to a word on the same project and how contributing can increase our learning curve by deploying the same skills and getting feedback from other devs. Not entirely sure where the question's there. And also, I can't see Q&A and chat at the same time, just FYI. So if anyone's, uh, let me check the chat real quick. You, oh, okay. Hey, Bex. Swag. Uh, 
Okay. Um, I see some really valuable suggestions here. Thank you everyone who's sharing that in chat. And if you want to check out more about the conference, uh, you can find us everywhere at DevConfCZ. So I'll write it in chat. Or this. Okay, I think that's it from me. Um, since there is no moderator, I'm not entirely sure. I will just thank you all uh, for participating uh, in chat uh, and like tuning in for this talk. Um, and thanks again to all the organizers.